I just went ahead and went full send and bought a bunch more GK Tech stuff. This angle kit that I got here basically comes with everything except for new knuckles. It is similar in price to angle kits that don't have custom knuckles. It gives you a crazy amount of angles. Let's go ahead and check out what we got. <laughs> Admittedly, I did already install some of this. I did one side. Um, I'm gonna step you guys through and show you how to install the other side. Not really so much a how to, but you know, just a little video about it. But um, first thing we got is the super lock lower control arms. Um, packaging was amazing. You can see this came in all of this nice foam packaging. There was a top piece of foam one here and uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But basically here's one of the arms. This is the driver's side arm. Um, I already put the dust boot protectors. I adjusted rose joints. Um, you can go on GK Tech's video and uh, look at their basically um, how to adjust and what your full adjustments are. Um, I believe that the shortest overstock this lower control arm goes is 25 millimeters and the maximum is 50 millimeters. I have mine set at um, probably about 40 millimeters uh, extra length overstock. Um, it comes with all the hardware you need so there's some spacers down here and stuff like that to adapt these joints to where they used to go in the car and some extra bolts and uh, stop. And then this box here is the upper control arms. Again, came packaged very nice in foam, bubble wrap, all that good stuff. Um, these again are fully adjustable. Um, this version that I have here, you can see that you can actually adjust them while they're still on the car. So there's a 12 millimeter Allen key in here if you swirl it in and out. It actually uses both of these thread patterns to move this in and out. So you don't have to take them off to adjust them, which is nice. So I have the, uh, as far as my initial setup, I have the lower set at uh, 40 millimeters plus, and I have the upper arm set at stock. So we should have a decent amount of camber when we set this down. Um, obviously we're probably gonna have to adjust some stuff. So, and this again comes with some spacers to adapt the rose joints uh, to where the old uh, rubber joints used to be. And these also help you with uh, caster adjustments. So depending on how you stack these washers up, you can actually change the caster from the upper arms. Um, I installed mine. I just went ahead and did stock caster since I'm running stock power on my car. And honestly, I just kind of want to feel that out for a little bit first and maybe make adjustments uh, later on in the season. So we got those. And then obviously um, from some previous footage, you guys have already seen the uh, GK Tech mini angle kit, which is basically just a tie rod relocation. So it just takes uh, this one. Yes, it's like this on the driver's side. So it basically just relocates your tie rod uh, back and inside. Um, this also, I believe, is going to make it so that you don't have to use offset rack spacers because, like I said, I believe this tie rod is set back farther now too. So when you put the uh, angle kit on, you don't have to worry about um, over centering of your tie rods, but we'll definitely be you know, exploring that when we get everything cooked up here. And then the last thing I got is just these universal, super long uh, tie rod ends, inner tie rod ends. Um, these are, these outers come with the mini angle kit and obviously they have nice rose joints on them too. So we just got these inners that are fully adjustable here with a lot more thread length. Um, my stock inner tie rods actually work with this. Um, when I put it one without the lower control arms, the new lower control arms, it actually worked. Um, one of them had a ton of thread engagement. One of them had enough, but um, I figured if I got these, we could cut them to length and just have, you know, as much thread engagement as possible. And also, um, you know, just have to ensure that we have adjustment for when we do our uh, alignment. So what I have to do now is, like I said, um, I already got the passenger side installed so let's go ahead and take a look at that so now i have the lowers and uppers and everything is loose right now but 
I'm gonna <laughs> I was amazed at how much angle I'm getting out of this kit I've never had a car with this much angle obviously um, but I will tell you that I probably won't be able to run this much angle there's gonna be some limiting factors um, so you know we'll have to see once we get both sides set and kind of get a rough front end alignment to see actually how much angle we got but the potential is ridiculous so um, lead wheel is obviously insane I mean that's got to be 65 60 65 70 degrees something like that which is insane trail wheel is there so yeah I mean pretty insane um, obviously you can see the trailing wheel is what's going to put the limit on so what I'm hitting right now with the trailing wheel is see if I can get in here and show you yeah is right there so hopefully you can see that but basically the banjo bolt still hits the shock tower um, we got a bunch more adjustment out of this because these lower control arms actually move that shock back about an inch so um, obviously we got a lot more angle out of it um, beyond that I'm not really sure what the solution is for that aside from obviously modified knuckles or yeah, I don't really know. So um, that's probably gonna be our limiting factor. Um, I'm also not sure, let's see if, yeah, so with the spacers on the wheels right now, there is uh, like, I think those are one inch spacers. So like 20, 25 mil spacers in the front and the wheel doesn't even come close to hitting the uh, sway bar at full lock at least when it's lifted we'll have to check it when it's sitting on the ground but yeah i mean lead wheel absolutely insane potential the lead wheel is actually limited right now too by the old tie rod mount which you can see right there so we could actually probably cut that off and get a couple more degrees out of this but like i said i think the limiting factor is probably going to be the trailing wheel so i'm not going to worry too much about that until we get the other side set and get the tie rods on. Loud cars. Um, and basically just go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and get the other side installed. I'm gonna get everything set up. Um, this install is gonna be a little bit different from what GK Tech shows because everything is missing. So there's no knuckle on here, there's no upper, there's no lower, I took everything off. Um, I'm going to go through this, put this other side on, give you guys some hints about how to install this crap, and we'll go from there. Alright, so basically first thing I'm going to do is put the upper control arms on, because it's a total pain in the ass. Um, for those of you installing this GK Tech, or basically any upper control arms on your 350Z, these bolts don't really come out unless you at least loosen the coilover bolts on the top because you'll see i mean i guess it depends on what kind of coilovers you have but um you can see this one will come out but this one see it, it just well it's going to come out the top here but it's going to be hard to get back in because it's not going to go in straight but these were kind of a pain in the butt to get out so i have my strut bar off right now and this coilover is loose so we're gonna go ahead and get this put on. All right, so now we got this lower control arm. So obviously the rose joints aren't as wide as the old bushings, so they come with a variety of spacers to use in different places. Basically, get the knuckle on. So, got my knuckle here Ugh. with my new ball joints pressed in. Hopefully, you guys got to see that. I also am using a little bit of blue thread locker on pretty much all these bolts. 
um, they don't really say I don't think it's really necessary but um, gives me just a little bit more peace of mind that they're not going to back out or vibrate out so So when you put this kit on, if you're using the lock arms, um, it obviously gets rid of the compression arm. So you're gonna use this bolt that they supply, but you're gonna need the cone off of the compression arm. So um, you can pull it off with a three jaw puller. I actually happen to have extra ones that worked from the new ball joints that we put on. Um, so I'm gonna use those. But like I said, you can pull your old ones off your compression arms. And that is honestly about it. Except for our tie rods, which I guess we're going to do next. So I got the new extended tie rods, so I took the old ones off. And um, we're going to have to cut the new ones. So... I'm going to go ahead and uh, get them and we'll kind of eyeball this straight and uh, actually I guess we should torque first. I'm going to go through and torque all of these bolts that we already have on except for the one that the brace goes on and uh, then we'll come back and do the tie rod ends. Alright so I got everything torqued up and ready to go on the driver's side. Um, basically except for the tie rod. So what we're going to do now is I went ahead and centered the rack so we're gonna uh, We're gonna point this guy uh, Up towards that guy kind of like that there we go and We're gonna kind of eyeball the wheel straight and then as you'll notice this tie rod is just super long So we're gonna cut it down. I'm gonna estimate uh, what we're going to cut down here that way we can get max thread engagement into uh, the end here and uh, You know so right now it's centered and I'm just eyeballing the wheel So we want to make sure that we have enough Thread engagement so we're going to check how far it actually goes in and then we're going to cut it down And we're going to leave a little bit of room here in the middle so that we can adjust in and out and uh then obviously to round off the whole project we have the rack spacers which we already installed once but i got the new tie rod ends so we're going to go ahead and the short one goes on this side or the little one goes on this side the big one goes on the other side i'll uh, put a bunch of thread lock on them get them all tightened down everything good like that and then we'll be ready to go